I've got loads to tell you about today, so I'm just going to crack on and dive straight in. But first of all, I'll tell you what I'm wearing. This is a Tosuti Monroe turtleneck, one of my favourites. It's a free pattern, and this fabric is from Guthrie Dorney. It's called their Variegated Knit, I believe. Um, they might still have it in stock because it, I bought it fairly recently. So if they do, I'll link it in the description for you. But what have I been up to? Well, it's been a very, very busy couple of weeks. Um, the first thing I want to tell you about is my dad's Ilford jacket, um, which I'm so thrilled with. So you might remember um, back maybe a month or so ago, um, I had in my plans to make myself an Ilford jacket, which I have, and it's just here on the on the ferrule. And then my dad saw the pattern, <clears throat> actually he saw my vlog where I was talking about the patterns that frighten me and what I want to make for this year, and the Ilford jacket was in there. And he said, oh, I saw that, and I thought, oh, I wonder if she's making that for me. So of course, I had to make one for him. So when I saw him at the end of February, um, we took his measurements and we went on the Merchant and Mills website. He chose the fabric that he wanted and we went on the Textile Garden website and he, he chose the buttons that he wanted. He also decided which pocket options he wanted. He just wanted the large patch pockets at the bottom and he didn't want any chest pockets at all. So I set about making it for him. Um, it was his birthday on the 15th of March and I was trying to get it ready for then which it was ready for then, but we actually didn't manage to, to catch up and see each other until yesterday. Um, so it's been waiting patiently for him. So I've not been able to show it to you. Um, but uh, it's now ready. Um, he, he had it yesterday. He tried it on. It fits. So I'm very, very pleased with that. Um, he loves it, which is even better. Um, I'll pop lots of pictures in um, up here that we took yesterday. It was so much fun. Um, I, I posted a picture on Instagram, um, just one photo, um, my favourite one I think of the bunch and uh, and I mentioned in there that when I was a kid um, my dad was really heavily into photography, he still is a little bit but he's got lots of hobbies so it's not, um, not top of the list but he is still quite into his photography um, but he was always going out with his camera and his tripod and uh, you know taking photos of different things and I used to tag along um, I'm the eldest of four children and yeah wherever he went I used to just want to go with him so we'd go off into into Wales chasing steam trains <laughs> and uh, into the countryside and yeah landscapes and waterfalls and all sorts of things we used to have a great time so it was always him behind the camera so it was quite a nice uh, a fun change yesterday for me to be behind the camera taking some photos of us and I got some lovely pictures of him in his jacket so yeah really thrilled with that. Um, mods I made to the pattern for him. I made him the size large and I extended like the, the, the standard length version but I added two and a half inches to the length of it um, on the body and on the sleeves. Um, I think that's the only change that I made really. Um, yeah and it fits in really really well as you can probably see from the pictures that I put in so that was very fun. The next thing to tell you about, well, I mean, it's been a really exciting couple of weeks for shows, hasn't it? We had the um, Sewing for Pleasure show at the NEC, which I've already shown you my purchases from, I think. Um, but then we also had the Stitch Festival in London, which I went to. And oh my goodness, it was a fabulous day, but so overwhelming. Um, yeah, I'm not used to being around that many people all at once and I did have a few moments where I just thought oh gosh this is it's all a bit too much and I so I you know went off and, and had a wander around the stalls and get a bit of uh, peace and quiet but it was all in all it was a lovely day um yeah the trains were an absolute nightmare I ended up being quite late to meet the other girls at Euston but they did wait for me so that was nice and uh, you probably heard all about the dilemmas with the tube stations being closed and I was getting the bus so it was quite fun. It's like being at school on the top deck with all your, your school friends giggling. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I had a lovely time. Um, I'll show you what I bought because I'm sure you well, might want to know. <laughs> 
the um, first thing I bought actually was a sew over it pattern and it was the, the Frankie pattern. We, their, their stand was quite close to the entrance um, and as I walked up to the stand I saw they had um, a jacket hanging up and it looked absolutely lovely and I said oh that's gorgeous, can I try it on? So they let me try it on and um, it was, it's quite similar to the Ilford jacket, it's that kind of workwear style but it's, it had a bit more a bit more shape to it, maybe a little bit more feminine, I suppose, than the than the Ilford. The um, the shoulder seams were on the shoulder, which you know I quite like. Um, and yeah, it was just a nice shape. The sleeves were a bit more fitted down towards the cuff. And I thought this is lovely. I think I want to make one of these. So the sample they had on the stand was a size twelve, and um, they had a deal on their patterns, and it was fifteen pounds, or you could get two for twenty. So me and Heather both tried the sample on, both really liked it, and thought we're going to buy that pattern. So uh, we managed to get we were two patterns for 20 quid, so a tenner each. And this is the instruction book that comes with the pattern. Um, I'll put the stock image up of the, the Frankie jacket as well. The one I tried on was the sort of yellowy colour one, which I think is actually the one that's in the sample photos on the website. So I bought that pattern and then all the way around the show I was looking out for some fabric to make that jacket in and I couldn't really find anything that I really wanted. Um, I think maybe I wanted something, maybe sort of some cotton twill type fabric and I suppose at the time of year lots and lots of fabric that was available was more lightweight and springy summery fabric so I couldn't really find what I wanted. Um, but at the end of the day I did go back to sew over it and ask them what they'd made theirs in. And they said it was the Mentana Cotton Twill from Sew Me Sunshine. So when I got home in the evening, I went on the Sew Me Sunshine website and ordered some of that fabric to make the jacket in. Um, it hasn't arrived yet, unfortunately, otherwise I'd like to show it to you. But I got the off-white colour. Um, so, yeah, once that arrives, I will show you. So that was my first purchase. Next, I bought some buttons from Ethel and Joan. I thought these were so cute. I've seen these sort of cloud shape um, designs on their earrings um, and I didn't know they did them on buttons. So when I saw those, I thought I'd, I'd grab myself a packet of those. They're really cute. So they're black and then they've got sort of gold and silvery flecks in. So that was very nice. I also bought some labels from What Vicky Made. Um, so she's the girl that was on the last season of The Sewing Bee. And she'd got some labels, some buttons and some fabric that she's designed. Um, so I picked up some of her labels. I think they were on the Pigeon Wishes stand. She was there too. Um, so you had to pay for these separately, but I think they were sharing the, the stand. Also from uh, Pigeon Wishes, I bought some fabric. Um, so this is a really gorgeous kind of rusty colour. And this is, I keep forgetting the name of it, I think it's tensile linen or linen tensile. So it's quite drapey from the tensile and then it's got the nice bit of texture from the linen. So yeah, that's really nice. And I got, I can't remember if I got two and a half or three metres, but I got enough to make a dress because that's my plan for this. And then the last thing I bought, I didn't buy too much actually, the last thing I bought was some fabric from Rosenberg's and I'll just show you this bit here. So this is Italian denim and it's so nice. It's really lightweight and it's got this really, really light blue, almost sort of grey background and then the darker blue, it's got like a leaf print. It's almost like, you know, when you were a kid and you used to press flowers in between two heavy books. It's like that kind of design that's been printed onto the fabric. So yeah, gorgeous. And I've already started making <laughs> a shirt with it. So you probably won't be surprised to know I'm making another Inez shirt, which is a Tasuti pattern and one of my absolute favourites. And I've got it just here behind me. So I've got, I've got quite um, far with it actually. I've got the uh, back yoke on, I've got the collar on, 
So my next step is to attach the inside yoke. The instructions on the pattern for this section I don't follow because I think they're overly complicated. I just use the burrito method, which once you've done that a few times, that's really simple. Um, so yeah, I go a bit off, off piste with the instructions just at this point, and then I come back and follow the instructions for the rest of the pattern. So yeah, I'm, I can't wait to wear this. It's gonna be really lovely. Uh, that was it, that's all I bought, but I did make a new dress to wear. Um, so let me go and grab that and show you. Okay, there it is. So I made, I told you about this already, didn't I? I made the Tasuti Melinda dress. I think that's how you say it. I bought this pattern at the NEC the week before and then got home, had a look in my fabric stash, picked out this Lady McElroy fabric and thought, I'm gonna make that up and I'm gonna wear it to London. So got it all done in the week. It's lovely, really, really happy with it. I made the size medium and it came out quite oversized. So I ended up taking the side seams in by an inch on either side. Um, and it, it is still probably a bit big around the neck, really, and around the top. So if I make it again, I might size down to the small. Uh, but I'm very, very happy with it. I also extended the sleeves just by two inches. Um, so they're just giving me a little bit more coverage on top of my arm. And I wore this with a black denim jacket, black tights, and my um, just some plain black boots. So I felt very 90s <laughs> and I loved it. So yeah, this dress is, uh, it has pleats to create the shaping. So you've got four pleats on the front that come from the neckline, sort of down to the waist really. And then it um, you top stitch those down on the outside. And then it opens out again over the hips for a bit of shape. And then you've got the same on the back, but just two. So from the neckline down to sort of the waist area. So it's quite a simple make, although in this fabric it was um, it was quite tricky because this is a bit shifty. Um, I put a label in it. That one is from So Confident, and I used some Specky Seamstress by its binding for the little fishes in to finish it off. So yeah, I enjoyed wearing it. It was very comfortable. Um, I will make another one, I think. Actually, I went to the Tasuti stand while I was there and there was a lady trying on their sample version of this dress when I got there. And um, the, the Tasuti lady said, oh, I've never seen one in a patterned fabric before, only ever seen it in plain. Um, so she said to this lady trying it on, she says, look, you can make it in patterned as well. And um, yeah, so that was quite nice. That's my Tasuti Melinda dress. I've been having a bit of a Tasuti uh, overload, I think, lately, because um, I've also been working on my So Frugal make. Um, it's almost finished. I've just got to um, put a bit of elastic in it and hem it. And that's also a Tasuti pattern, which is their free skirt pattern. I think they did have, um, have it on a blog post but it was quite popular, so they've turned it into an actual pattern that you can download for free. You get, um, when I say pattern, you get the instruction book, and in there it tells you the size of the panels to cut out, because they're just big rectangles, so you don't actually get pattern pieces that you need to print off. Um, it, you just get the instruction book. But that's been quite simple. I haven't put the pockets in, um, because the fabric I'm using is quite light and flowy and I wasn't completely sure that the pockets, if I, if I put pockets in it, it might kind of pull the shape out a little bit. Um, so I'll see how it goes without pockets. I probably will miss having pockets in it, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I can always make another one. I do think that the size, uh, the width of the fabric piece that they tell you to cut out is probably too wide because I have struggled to get it gathered in on the length of elastic that I need. It's there's so much gathering and it's really really bunched up. Um, so yeah, I'd just take that with a bit of caution. It says to cut two rectangles of 104 
centimetres by 104 centimetres. That's for the Australia 12 to 14 size. So yeah, that's quite a lot of fabric. Two metres worth of fabric all gathered in around your waist. So yeah. I like the pattern, but if you're going to make it, maybe just narrow those panels a little bit. Unless you want loads and loads and loads of gathers. In which case, just go with the pattern. <laughs> uh, what else do I have to tell you about? Oh, so yellow for endo. So... I did a So Yellow for Endo vlog and I had loads of ideas of what I might make um, to recreate some of my favourite looks that are on the high street at the moment and I didn't do any of them. <laughs> I had so much going on. Um, well, my weekends have all been taken up in March with uh, various sewing activities and I've had a couple of makes as you've seen, my dad's jacket, my dress to wear to the, the festival bits and bobs so I didn't really get time to make another garment but what I did make was this Easter basket um, so I followed a tutorial by Sotac Handmade on YouTube I'll link it in the description so you can go and have a look and it's really cute I've got it by my sewing machine with loads of sort of bits and bobs that you use regularly so it just keeps them nice and in one piece and this fabric is Liberty Forget-Me-Not on the outside and it's got little yellow flowers in there. So I thought that would count towards So Yellow for Endo. So that was that. Gosh, that's so much, isn't it? Um, I don't know how long I've been recording for. Do I know how long? I don't know. But um, what am I planning for the week ahead? So I'm going to finish off this here I'm going to finish off my Inez shirt. I might make a start on this tensile linen fabric and I think what I want to do with that is, I'm going to get bored of me saying this now, but I might use the same shirt pattern but extend it into a dress. Um, yeah, maybe. I did buy that fabric thinking the stock image on the front of the Melinda dress pattern is pretty much that colour. Maybe I could try and recreate that. I don't know. But then there's also the So April blouse competition coming up, isn't there? So who knows? It might be something completely different. But uh, I feel like I've forgotten something. What have I forgot to tell you? Oh, I've got another make. Hold on, I'll go and get it. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I did make something else in uh, in March, which is this. And this is the Nerida Hansen cuff sleeve top. And I've made it in Nerida Hansen fabric. I can't remember what the design of this is called, but it was really, really popular earlier on in the year. So I know lots of you will probably have got this one or there were a few other pattern variations all with similar colours. So yeah, I'm happy with this. It's a really nice, lightweight, springy top. Again, I've used that uh, specky seamstress bias tape in there. Just gives a nice finish to the neckline. So yeah, quite happy with that. I'm not a massive fan of grown on sleeves particularly in a fabric that's got a bit of structure because when I put it on I feel like it kind of makes me look a bit like a big triangle because you're sticking out a little bit but I think it'll be fine underneath other things but just having a little pop of colour poking out so yeah that was my other make quite pleased with that bias binding is nice I think and then nice so I've made quite a bit haven't I I've got my dad's jacket my Melinda dress my Nerida Hansen top, my Easter basket. I've started my So Frugal make. I've started <laughs> another shirt. Wow, no wonder I didn't get a, a big So Yellow garment sewn. I've done so much. Um, yeah, well, I guess I'll leave it there, unless I pop back on in a minute because I've forgotten something else. Um, but thank you so much for watching as always I really appreciate having you here 
um, give me a like if you liked it, subscribe if you don't already, and um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye!